Howdy, partner. Name is Ambrose Benjamin Treebeard, and I'm the sheriff of Virginia City and Story County, the heart of the famous Comstock Gold and Silver Mining District in the Territory of Nevada. You may know that people have been baking a bread-like batter between hot metal plates since the Middle Ages. Well, Thomas Jefferson returned to the United States in 1789 from a diplomatic mission to France with recipes for making waffles and a pair of long-handled hinged steel plates that probably looked a lot like this camping waffle iron you can get today. On August 24, 1869, a Dutch American by the name of Cornelius Zwartvoet of Troy, New York got the first U.S. patent for a waffle iron. The anniversary of that patent is now celebrated as National Waffle Day in the United States. Until the middle of the 20th century, American waffles were generally thin and made from a batter leavened with baking powder. At the 1962 Seattle World's Fair, a Belgian man named Walter Clayman first introduced Brussels waffles to North America. In English, he called them Belgian waffles, out of concern that Americans would not know where Brussels was. These waffles were leavened with yeast and cooked in an iron that was much deeper, creating a light, crisp waffle that could hold lots of toppings in its deep crevices. Two years later, the Bell Gem Waffle took the 1964 New York World's Fair by storm, and Belgian waffle irons have been part of American breakfasts ever since. Nowadays, we have fancy two-sided electric waffle makers like this one. Sure beats holding a pair of long-handled heavy iron grates over a potbelly wood stove, but it won't do us any good without a decent batter to put in it, so let's get started. And speaking of decent, don't let me catch you pouring pancake batter into your precious waffle iron. All you're going to get are dented pancakes, and that's missing the point of making waffles entirely. I put folks in jail for lesser offenses than that. Before we're done, you're going to need three bowls, large, medium, and small. And we'll start with the large one for the dry ingredients. Gather your staples and arrange them real nice so you don't forget one. Waffle batters don't have to be all that finicky, but you leave something out and it'll make a noticeable difference. This recipe makes four full-size Belgian-style waffles. You'll probably want to double it if you are sharing your waffles with more than one person at your table. Start with a half cup of all-purpose flour. If you're watching closely, you'll see that I'm measuring out two quarter cup measures, and you math whizzes will know that makes a half cup. Get your measurements close, but don't be fussing over being exact. We're making waffles, not vaccines here. Next, add a quarter cup of white or yellow cornmeal. Either one is just fine. This gives your waffles a light, crunchy texture without adding heaviness to the waffle. Now add a quarter cup of cornstarch. This absorbs moisture during the cooking and keeps the waffle light, airy, and crisp. Next, add a half teaspoon of salt. Best to measure your salt over the table so you don't spill any extra into your bowl. Nobody likes a really salty waffle. Add a half teaspoon of baking powder. This reacts with moisture and heat to produce gas bubbles that make waffles light as a feather. Now a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, which reacts with the acid in the buttermilk to add more gas bubbles during the cooking.
If you like, you can add some cinnamon or nutmeg to give your waffles a special flavor enhancement. We're going to add a half teaspoon of cinnamon here. Be careful not to overdo it. Now if you want savory waffles to have with your fried chicken, use sage, thyme, or even a dash of Italian seasoning and cracked peppercorns. Now everybody in the bowl needs to get really well acquainted with each other, so gently whisk it around a few times to make it all look the same color. All right, clear the deck and let's get started on the wet stuff. Set the other two bowls out. Yeah, nice and centered in the frame there. And pour in one cup of cultured buttermilk. Next, crack an egg and, oops, put the white in a separate bowl and the yolk in with the buttermilk. Yeah, nice recovery there, champ. Everything went where it was supposed to and not a single piece of eggshell in the mix. You need 3 8 cup of cooking oil. My set of measuring cups doesn't have a 3 8 cup measure, so I just get out my 3 quarter cup measure and fill it halfway. Add about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Yeah, that's about right. The amount is up to you and depends on your personal taste preferences and how much you think about replacing that small bottle of liquid that costs almost 100 times more than the gasoline for your truck. For breakfast waffles, put a tablespoon of sugar in the egg white and start beating the daylights out of them and the air into them until you form soft peaks. This is another form of leavening for the waffles that helps them stay fluffy during the baking. The sugar helps strengthen the bubbles in the egg white, but you can leave out the sugar for savory waffles. Whisk up the buttermilk mixture until it's uniform and try to keep most of it in the bowl. Get your dry ingredients front and center now and pour in the buttermilk mixture. Use a whisk to get everything wet. We're not trying to homogenize this, so a few small lumps are just fine. Over mixing the batter can develop the gluten in the flour and make the waffles tough and chewy. And we're making waffles, not pizza dough, right partner? Now go find a rubber spatula. Ah, there we go. And get all those egg whites into the batter. Use the whisk or the spatula to gently fold the batter over the egg white to incorporate them without destroying the trapped air bubbles. Here again, over mixing is not a good idea. Okay, it's time for the waffle iron. While it's coming up to temperature, spray each grid surface with a shot of cooking spray. You only need to do this once because the waffles contain enough oil to keep the whole batch from sticking after this. You've made about two cups of batter in this recipe, which is enough to make four waffles. So pour in about half a cup into each side of the waffle iron and let it cook. When you no longer see steam coming out of the iron, or when the timer beeps, remove the waffles to a plate. A wooden chopstick is a good way to wrangle them around.
refill the empty grid with half of the remaining batter, flip it and remove the waffle from the other side. Refill that grid with the rest of the batter you have left. Never stack freshly cooked waffles. They will continue to let off steam and stacking will trap moisture making them soggy. Instead, set them on the racks of a warm oven until you're ready to serve. Waffles are special, whether you eat them out of your hand or make a special presentation for someone you want to favorably impress. As simple as they are to cook, they still convey a cozy kind of extravagance and make a pleasant impression on those who receive them. Topped with fresh fruit like these summertime strawberries and dressed up with whipped cream, waffles are appealing to the eye and delightful to the palate. These waffles are light, airy, crisp, and slightly crunchy, yet stand up to a variety of syrups and toppings without getting soggy. This simple recipe and the delightful taste of these waffles might convince you to keep that waffle iron closer to the front of the cabinet, or maybe even on the countertop so you can enjoy them more often. Thanks for having waffles with Treebeard. This isn't a series or anything like that, at least not yet anyway, but your comments are welcome, and likes are appreciated, and you can subscribe if you wish. Stay bearded and keep cooking for those you love.